I'm not against the vaccine, but I'd rather wait a bit. Before immunizing ourselves against coronavirus, we must immunize ourselves against fear. The least people trust the institution, the least they're going to want to be vaccinated. Welcome to a new edition. I'm Nadia Shabi, and as the French authorities roll out their first anti-COVID vaccination campaign, we're putting the focus on the public's response. Because while most pandemic-weary nations have welcomed this fast-tracked medical breakthrough as a bit of light at the end of a year-long tunnel, France remains the most vaccine-averse nation in the world. In fact, as inoculations begin, some 58% of French citizens say they won't be getting the jab, much to the government's chagrin. But as you're about to see, it's a deep-rooted defiance that goes back almost as far as vaccines themselves. Louis Pasteur's rabies vaccine came as a revolution to French medicine in 1885. But instead of being celebrated, his breakthrough sparked controversy. Some criticized him for experimenting on animals, while others accused him of trying to make a profit from creating laboratory rabies. At the time, government subsidies were decreasing, and Pasteur was said to have brought out his vaccine so as to be guaranteed his pension. Critics saw the Pasteur Institute as a virus factory focused uniquely on profit at human expense. When it came to vaccinations, the 20th century was an era of major progress. Diseases like TB, tetanus and whooping cough, not so long ago deadly, are much less dangerous today thanks to immunizations. To increase their efficiency, these jabs contain aluminium salts, which opponents say are harmful to the human body. In 1994, the French government launched a major vaccination campaign against the hepatitis B virus. 20 million people received the injection. But meanwhile, the number of multiple sclerosis cases rose from 36 to more than 1,000 in the early 2000s. In 1998, then-Health Minister Bernard Kouchner suspended the vaccination campaign launched by his predecessor, leaving doubts about a possible link with the MS cases. Two ministers in a row with the same level of political authority. Well, it puts the idea in people's minds. If the ministers have doubts, then why shouldn't I? No scientific study to date supports the theory of a significant link between the vaccine and multiple sclerosis. But doubt remains for anti-vaxxers. In 1998, prestigious medical journal The Lancet published a study on the MMR vaccine, which immunizes against measles, mumps and rubella. The article by English doctor Andrew Wakefield described a link between the drug and a form of autism. The study was disproved, but by the time the journal retracted the article, the damage was done. There was a big anti-vaccine campaign against this measles vaccine. It was shown to be completely false, but people didn't forget it, and it remains a vaccine that not enough people in France agree to get. Over the years, the French's distrust of vaccines has also increased. In 2009, the H1N1 vaccination campaign was a huge failure, partly due to suspicions of collusion between the state and pharmaceutical companies. In the end, the epidemic proved to be less serious than expected, and millions of doses had to be thrown away. To give us more background to the French reluctance regarding vaccination, I've come to the Fondation Jean Jaurès think tank to meet with social science professor Antoine Bristiel, who's the author of a study entitled Vaccines, the Jab of Defiance. Hello, thank you very much for being with us. Bonjour. Now, do you think the sheer scale and impact of the COVID crisis might bring about a change in the French attitude towards inoculation, or is the particularly rapid rollout of this vaccine a massive part of the problem? When people who are hesitant regarding inoculation explain why they refuse to get vaccinated, the first thing they mention is fear of the vaccine itself. They feel there isn't enough hindsight. They're afraid of the side effects regarding a product that hasn't been put to the test of time. And we see reluctance on this issue in a number of countries, but especially here in France. How do you explain that? 
En France, in France, trust in our political institutions and our scientists is pretty low, certainly lower than in other nations. And there's a clear link between defiance towards the establishment and rejection of this vaccine. That's a key factor behind this very French phenomenon. Now, women and young people are the most anti-vaccine demographics. Why? Regarding young people, the issue of whether or not to get inoculated comes down to balancing the pros and cons, benefits and risks, and young people feel they're less at risk from COVID. So their calculation is, given the limited information and hindsight we have regarding the vaccine, it might be riskier to get the jab. For women, the fear is twofold, both for their own health and also for that of their children. And we're still in a society where women are given the role of caring for children more so than men. And does that trust issue also come down to the way uh, the French authorities have handled the COVID crisis? Clearly, there has been a downward trend regarding confidence in the government's handling of the crisis. Not least because of its contradictory take on mask wearing. Initially, authorities came out against before eventually making them compulsory. And we see that people who were very skeptical regarding masks are the same ones who now don't want to get inoculated. And do the skeptics themselves also have some form of political bias? We Absolutely. Our study shows that citizens who support the far left or far right parties are far more skeptical regarding the vaccine than other French voters. Well, let's take a moment now to watch this report on the French government's efforts to bring round and reassure France's vaccine skeptics. I'm not against the vaccine, but I'd rather wait a bit. The vaccine was made in such a rush. I'm sure there will be problems with it. I won't get vaccinated. France is far from having everyone convinced about COVID-19 vaccines. In a bid to encourage people to get vaccinated, the government's tactic at first was to explain and reassure. Before immunizing ourselves against coronavirus, we must immunize ourselves against fear. Transparency became the key word in the government's vaccination campaign, meaning sharing all information on how effective the vaccine is, its side effects and even doubts it raises. It's important to say that there are many things that we don't know about the virus and we don't know everything about the first round of vaccines coming. Getting vaccinated not only means protecting yourself but those around you. That's the message being promoted by French President Emmanuel Macron, who is calling for selflessness. Prime Minister Jean Castex is also counting on GPs to reassure people. Everyone must be able to get vaccinated by a health professional in their area who they know and trust. But the cautious approach taken by French authorities has since backfired. They're now being accused of moving too slowly. Only 516 people were vaccinated in the first week in France, compared to 200,000 in Germany and more than 100,000 in Italy. The minister's strategy of going slowly was partly justified by the fact that people apparently didn't want to get vaccinated. But there are people who do. Make them the priority. Under fire, the government has decided to speed up the process and widen the vaccination campaign earlier than planned. Antoine Bristiel, as we've seen, authorities are hoping to leverage a sense of solidarity. Is that the best way to go about in changing French people's minds? Certainly, this idea of solidarity can be a good strategy, but it's important to communicate on the benefits of inoculation. And obviously, the greatest benefit of widespread vaccination is the possibility of returning to the way things were before the crisis. So, playing on that form of nostalgia regarding the good old days could be very effective, especially since we found out that those who are the most skeptic are also the most nostalgic. Uh, might it also be a question of, of what media uh, you use to communicate, who you communicate through, perhaps through a more proximity? Proximity with, for example, doctors, uh, pharmacists. In France, when you ask people who they trust to give them honest information regarding the vaccine, they point to their pharmacist or their general practitioner, whereas in other countries the answer is often the establishment, both political and scientific. So clearly, proximity is key here, and these actors need to be involved in the government's effort to get the population on board. Should the financial aspect of this inoculation campaign also be addressed, perhaps? 
Transparency is essential. First, transparency regarding the vaccine side effects, but also transparency on the economic front. It's the hot topic on social media, this idea that the government might be colluding with the pharmaceutical industry. And is that also why the French don't trust scientists either? Trust in the country's scientists dropped from 90% to 70% during this pandemic. And that also comes down to some very public disagreements between scientists that played out daily in the media, as well as the growing role of social media, where conspiracy theories have flourished. Is there also perhaps an issue that the French government, for the moment at least, and the president are refusing to get inoculated themselves? The president has said that the time isn't right for him to get inoculated, and we've heard the same from the government. Given that Emmanuel Macron was keen to present himself as the commander-in-chief during this war on Covid, it might be good if he led by example. And do you think it will be a question of time, perhaps watching the rest of the world go through it first, or do you think that this won't take, you know, even once the vaccine has been proven safe? There are a lot of French citizens who can still be swayed, who are leaning one way or the other, but haven't made up their minds yet. So they can be convinced by others, whether in other countries or closer to home, friends, family, colleagues, who once they've been vaccinated without any serious side effects, will be able to convince the skeptics. Can I ask you a last question? Are you planning to get inoculated? Oui. Yes. <laughs> Antoine Bastille, thank you very much for having spoken to us. And with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and stay safe. Fake news. Noun. False stories that appear to be news spread on the internet or using other media. At France 24, our job is to provide you with information that's been verified. We check sources. We check facts. We sort what is true from what is fake. At the France 24 observers, we verify photos and videos circulating online. If they're fake, we let you know and tell you how we spotted them. In fact or fake, we dig into viral stories around Europe to shake out the truth from the trash. Every day, the InfoMigrants team scours social networks to fight fake news about the reality of migration. France 24. News based on facts. Liberté, égalité, actualité.